need a vacation if we're working every day. Absolutely, and I think more so. We work too hard in this country. Uh, in France, Italy, elsewhere, six weeks is norm. But while America doesn't have mandatory vacation yet, we do have all these laws, 170,000 pages of federal rules that you must obey. And they keep passing more. Look at this chart. It shows how America has recovered from every recession since the Great Depression. A fast recovery in every one except for the red line. That's the current recovery, or non-recovery, I should say. I got this graph from economist Dan Mitchell of the Cato Institute. Uh, Dan, this recovery is slower because, partly because of all these rules? You add up all the regulations in red tape, all the government spending, all the tax increases we're about to get, you can understand why entrepreneurs are thinking, well, maybe I don't want to hire people. And if I do hire them, it's sort of like the mess in Europe where, well, maybe I want to make sure I keep my company small. I don't want to give them health insurance because then I'm stuck with all the Obamacare mandates. I worry that we are becoming like Europe at exactly the same moment we're seeing that model fall apart. And in the past, we had horrible recessions. And we had many of these laws, but not as many. And that allowed the animal spirits of entrepreneurs to make a difference. As much as I would like a deregulated laissez-faire economy, you don't need that. You just need to make sure that you have enough breathing room for the private economy to prosper. But over time, if government keeps growing faster than the private sector, that wedge basically means that the burden of government as a share of GDP is rising, and sooner or later, it's not like there's a magic tipping point where one straw on the camel's back causes it to collapse. But there is but, a tipping point. But, but there is a tipping point, and we are seeing it. Now, does that mean that we're five years away from being greased, 20 years? I don't know. If I knew, I'd be rich. I'd be on Wall Street or something. But I know that the trend line is very bad. It happened under Bush, a Republican. It's happening under Obama, a Democrat. It doesn't work. Let's talk about some of the it, these good intentions that go bad. Clean energy. Solyndra. It's like a word association game. And you look at Solyndra, that's just the that's tip just of the iceberg. That's just one example. Well, it's just the tip of the iceberg. We've had dozens of these companies go bad, but it's really the story behind the story where it turns out that these are big campaign contributors. They're then getting these interest-free loans and forgiven loans from the government. You're distorting capital in the economy. What does that mean? It sounds like a boring economic term. It basically means that resources are being used less productively, which means we get less growth, which means workers get lower wages. Ages, it adds up to a bad situation. We've got laws that encourage home ownership. President Bush says if you own a home, you have an ownership society, you take care of things, it's good for the economy. Where you then create a housing bubble that blows up. So the very people who were supposed to be helped, homeowners, often were the ones that were sort of lured into walking out on the plank, and then, of course, the plank collapsed. We all fall into the shark-infested waters. We have these tax credits, which are supposed to direct our spending to good things. It sounds great, but from a tiny little tax code in 1913, only two pages long, 14 pages of law, we've now morphed into this 72,000-page monster. If you go to the IRS website, there's more than 1,000 different forms and regulations and things like that you can download. Nobody understands it at all. It's a boon to the CPAs. H&R uh, Block, I'm sure, loves it, but it's definitely a big millstone around the neck of the American economy. But every single one of those 72,000 pages has something in it that probably sounds good. But look what, it's, what it adds up to. And uh, lastly, on the spending. The machinery of the welfare state. Everyone in the street we asked said you got to take care of people, and we all want to help people. Well, Unintended consequence? What worries me about the welfare state is this is where you're hurting people who are most vulnerable. Because the welfare state, when you look at the dozens of programs that comprise the welfare state, it becomes like, uh, like flypaper. It holds people down. There are some shocking figures showing that as, you, as your income rises, you're trying to make yourself better off, you're doing the right thing, you're trying to live the American dream. As you earn more income, you start getting taxed on one end, and then the government's taking away all these benefits on the other end. So you have 
lower income people who are trying to get better off who actually lose living standards. They have less disposable income if, they're, if they get $10,000 more in salary. It's, it's amazing. Because they pay more in taxes, being in this higher bracket, and they lose government benefits. They lose government benefits, whether it's food stamps, whether it's earned income credit, whether it's uh, welfare benefits, whether it's Medicaid eligibility, uh, whether it's housing assistance. You're like on a treadmill, but you're not even running hard to keep where you are, you're running harder and harder and the treadmill's going backwards. And, and think about the message that sends to the very people we want to help. It, it, it discourages them. They decide, well, heck, I'm just going to try to get on disability or I'm just not going to work as hard. In, in Pennsylvania, you mentioned, if you had $29,000 of income, you're better off staying there than earning 55000 I hope this was an exception, not the rule. In effect, you are told don't earn more because you lose the safety net. Well, maybe if the safety net wasn't luring people into disincentives, uh, we wouldn't have the big problem we have today. Good intentions going bad. Thank you, Dan Mitchell. Coming up, you probably heard this.